This is my Harbor Freight 3-in-1 mill lathe combo. And if you are seeing this machine for the very first time, this is likely your first visit to my YouTube channel. And that's okay. Welcome to the channel. Greetings fellow DIYer and welcome to my video. This is by no means a factory stock combo machine. I have done so many upgrades, I have changed so many things on this machine that it hardly looks the way it looked when I uncrated it 10 plus years ago. My channel is full of modifications that I have done to this machine and Every single thing that we're about to talk about probably has its own video. I'm going to put links down in the description for all the upgrades that I've done so you can look at those videos and hopefully that information will help you modify your machine. This is actually the second video that I've done on all the upgrades that I've done to this machine. When I first started my YouTube channel, I did kind of a poorly put together and rather gimmicky top 10 video of all the mods that I've done to this machine. A lot of modification was done after that video and that was an early video in my YouTube creator story. So I just decided to do a fresh video with all of the changes, all of the mods, and we're going to dive right in. There are about 18 modifications that I have done to this machine. I say about because some of these modifications are related. One flows into the other, but the list that I made has 18 things on it. So we're gonna go with 18. The upgrades that I'm about to go over are not being presented in the order that they were necessarily done to the machine. They're also not being presented in a which one is best kind of format. I sat down, I made a list, I kind of put them in an order that makes sense, that flows from one to the next. Also, if there is a standalone video for the specific thing that I'm talking about, I'm going to put the thumbnail image for that video up in this video so you know what you're looking for when you go to the playlist to try and get more details on these upgrades. As I said, I am not going to go through all the details. I'm just going to talk about what I did and why I did it. And if you want to know how I did it, you need to watch the other video. So before we jump into all the mods that this machine has, there is one mod that it no longer has that I want to address. So there's my three in one mill lathe combo as it looks today. But wait, where's the mill head? Oh, I found it. Good. I removed this mill head from this mill lathe combo and put it on its own stand because the setup time between lathe and mill was always very time consuming. And we're not talking about getting over here and flipping the clutch. We're talking about putting the vise on the cross slide table. We're talking about getting everything true and accurate and that kind of thing. By making it its own machine, I actually used this mill head a whole lot more than I did when it was in this configuration. Now the downside to doing that is now I needed space for two machines. And I was also having some chatter issues with this lathe. And the reason I was having chatter with the lathe is because I had reduced the mass. My solution was to put a hundred pound column of lead right here to take the place of the mill head and that significantly improved the cuts compared to not having the extra mass of the mill head on top. The downside of my DIY mill build was not having height adjustment. So that's when we went to DIY mill build 2.0. And I spent a bunch of time fabricating a frame that had height adjustment. And that opened up the milling world for me. I suddenly started milling all kinds of things. So if it worked so well, 
Why is this mill head no longer on my DIY creation? Why is it here on the lathe? Well, the reality of it was the shortcoming of that DIY mill build was the cross slide table. It did not have enough travel side to side and that really limited the pieces that I could work on. Ultimately, I decided it was time to get a standalone mill. And when I did that, I no longer had room for my DIY mill. The easiest solution at that point was to take the mill head, put it back on the mill lathe combo. And that creation that I made, that beautiful adjustable stand with the electric motor on top, all that, we're still going to see some use for that. I am going to convert that into a DIY surface grinder. First thing we're going to talk about is the lead screws. I have replaced both lead screws on this machine, both the X axis and the Y axis. And I did that for two reasons. The first reason is I put enough hours on the machine that I was starting to see a lot more slop, a lot more backlash, that kind of thing. Nut was still good, the lead screw was still good, but definitely signs of age and wear were beginning to show. The second reason, and this was a big one, is the lead screw was not standard, not even remotely standard. This is an import mill lathe combo made in China, as most import machines are. And when they machined the lead screws, they used metric stock and machined in metric threads at 10 threads per inch. Basically, they made it in such a way that there is no replacement parts available. This one was originally 20 millimeter trapezoidal thread with 10 threads per inch. And this one was 15 millimeter, 10 threads per inch trapezoidal. Now they are both three quarter inch, 10 threads per inch, and Acme. So you can easily get a tap to make a nut for it. You can easily get replacement bar stock with the threads already on it. This was a significant upgrade. Not only does it give me practically brand new lead screws because they don't have that many hours on them, but it also makes it so that if I did have to replace them in the future, it would not be that hard to do. Spending all that time putting in the new lead screws, I wanted to protect them. And I found these boots online and basically made really nice lead screw covers to protect my brand new lead screw so that it would last even longer than the first one had. The next upgrade I want to talk about is actually to the stand that this is on and not the actual mill lathe combo. This is on wheels so that I can roll it around my shop. Wheels are nice, but they make it so that vibration can enter into the system and so that you don't quite have the same rigidity that you would have if it was sitting directly on the concrete. My solution was casters on demand. I fabricated up a system that has threaded rod as a way to lock everything in place, two hydraulic jacks, and it allows me to raise and lower this setup. So basically I can raise it up, put the full weight on the casters, roll the machine around, and then when I get it into place, I can set it down, improving my rigidity and improving the overall function of the machine. Now, I'm sure there are those of you that are thinking that because of lack of levelness and that kind of thing, that there's gonna be twisting and now I've shot all my accuracy. If you're using a machine like this, you're probably not shooting for the tightest of accuracy. And the accuracy of this machine was based on this solid steel frame. So any slight twisting that we get is pretty minimal and it's really not that critical, at least for the work that I do. The next upgrade, and this was one of the first upgrades that I actually did to this machine, and that was to ditch the four inch chuck and add a five inch chuck. I was able to get this adapter plate from Little Machine Shop, and this allowed me to purchase several five inch chucks that I can now put on this machine. 
Changing it out is kind of a pain. You have to get in behind and loosen the three bolts that hold the spindle to the chuck. But it is nice to have that option, you know, to be able to go from a three jaw to a four jaw independent or a four jaw self-centering. It's just a nice feature to have. The biggest advantage that I gained by going with the bigger chuck was a bigger throat. And by having that bigger throat, it allowed me to work bigger items. If you're going to upgrade the chuck, it's a good idea to upgrade the tool post. And I went with a wedge style quick change tool post. This originally came with a turret style tool post and going quick change made things so much easier, so much more accurate. The best part about it is I can now easily adjust the height. And that was not an option, at least not without shimming and a bunch of extra effort with the original tool post that came on this machine. Originally with this machine, there was a compound between the quick change tool post and the bed. And I spent quite a bit of time, and we're gonna talk about this as we talk about a couple of the other upgrades. I spent quite a bit of time chasing some slop in this machine. Mill lathe combos are decent machines. They're a far better lathe than they are mill. And there are definitely variations in quality, like a Smithy makes a pretty good combo. This was a Harbor Freight unit. This was inexpensive, this was thrown together in China, and I got what I paid for. And I had to go through and chase some rigidity issues. And one of the rigidity issues was actually coming from the compound. So I fabricated this solid tool post, and that allows me to tie the quick change tool post directly to the bed without anything that moves, and that significantly improved my cuts. This machine originally came with a much smaller cross slide table. It was, I believe, about six or eight inches where this one is far bigger. This picture shows the original cross slide table sitting next to this table, and you can see the difference. I ended up getting this. There was a guy that was parting out a smithy, and it came with the bigger table. Now, for using the lathe, the bigger table doesn't really get you a whole lot. Yes, there are times where having a little more throw each direction would be advantageous, but you're still limited to the size of the work that you can do. Where this really shines, and the reason I went through the effort and expense of putting in this bigger table, is it gives you far more options when milling. You can mount a bigger piece, you have a bigger area to use mounting clamps, things like that. And this table significantly improved this machine's ability to mill. One downside of this bigger chuck is it is kind of in the way of the mill head. Before, when it was a four inch chuck that didn't require a backing plate, you could leave the chuck on the machine and still do some milling. But now we are so close that any tooling I put in here is gonna hit this chuck. So even though it was a huge advantage going to this larger chuck, I do now have to remove this chuck if I'm going to use it as a mill. The next upgrade and one of my favorites is a DRO. This unit right here helped me to make parts more accurately. It eliminated the need to worry about backlash. It told me exactly what my machine was doing in all three axes. It was not terribly expensive. If you are going to have a machine like this, this is not required, but man, does it make life really, really nice. This DRO reads in all three directions. If I zero everything out, you can see we've got X travel, Y travel, and Z travel. It's all right there on the display. It's easy to read, and it was a huge upgrade to this machine. You may be wondering what this knob is right here, and this is a spindle lock that I designed and came up with myself that uses a flexure type design. It's split at the bottom to clamp down onto the spindle and lock it into place. 
It's simple to use. You just turn the knob to lock it down. You turn the knob to unlock it and it frees up the spindle. Nice feature to have, especially if you're trying to run a die over something to thread it. I don't use it as often as I thought I would, but it was a nice upgrade to this machine. So it turns out that I've done so many modifications to this machine that trying to put them all in one video makes the video well over a half an hour long. And who wants to sit there for a half an hour on YouTube and watch a video of that length? I decided to break it into a two-part series. This is the conclusion of the first video. And next week, I will drop the second half showing the remaining upgrades. If you have any questions on this machine, don't hesitate to reach out. I would love to answer those questions. If there's anything else you'd like to know, put that down below as a comment, and I will try and get it answered for you. If you like what you've seen, please click like. If you'd like to see more, please subscribe. Thanks for watching.